So one of the best features of S3 is that you can host a static website. So static websites are websites with static content. I hope you all know that. And in general, you refer to them as services or websites, which do not actually connect to other services or servers or reference data to update the web page. Okay, so you can host it by uploading your HTML file and script files into the bucket. And along with that, you need to enable static website hosting and set bucket permissions as well and add an index document like index.html which will be the reference point okay so after you configure your bucket as a static website you can access the bucket through the aws region specific amazon s3 website endpoints for your bucket okay so if you have a website you can point the same using route 53 policy to map your url to s3 bucket endpoint by creating a cname record so let's see how the visualization works here so we have the VPC here where we are trying to host the website, the static website. So we have the bucket here where we are going to put all, all the static contents that we have like the index.html or the template file or the CSS file. And uh, basically, as I already told you that there will be a website endpoint. Okay, so the endpoint will be looking like this. Website endpoint will look like this. So uh, like pytholic hyphen bucket, this is bucket name dot s3 hyphen website dot the region name dot amazon aws.com slash index.html so index.html is going to be the reference point and there are two ways uh, the endpoint actually uh, can be defined the format actually so you can have it like dot us hyphen west hyphen 2 or hyphen us hyphen west hyphen 2 okay so these are the two formats you are uh, allowed to have and uh, as i already told we will be using root 53 to create the cname record and cname records are basically uh, url to url mapping for aws so basically what actually determines is let's suppose we have a client here he already has a website like uh, mystaticwebsite.com so this website actually is already hosted somewhere and uh, this reference point will be redirected to this uh, website endpoint so whenever any user logs into www.mystaticwebsite.com using the cname record it will be pointing it to this website endpoint okay so as i already mentioned here like if you have a website you can point the same using the route 53 policy to map your url to s3 bucket endpoint by creating the cname record okay so there are two things here that we need to understand which is basically one of one of the things is how it is basically hosted and another thing is the differences between website endpoint and rest api endpoints okay so when we talk about the differences we have already shown it here like so it's basically like rest api endpoints and the website endpoints so the differences will be like rest api endpoint supports both public and private content but the website endpoints support only publicly readable content so rest api endpoints may return like xml formatted or json it depends on what type of rest api you are working with the redirection is not applicable for rest api endpoints but uh, on website endpoint it supports both object level and bucket level redirects so the rest api endpoint supports all bucket and object operations but so the website endpoint actually supports only get and head requests on objects and rest api endpoints uh, returns a list of object keys in the bucket and uh, the website endpoint returns the index document that is specified in the website configuration okay and rest api obviously will support ssl connections because it over https but website endpoints do not support ssl so this is the rest api format like uh, what the difference is that we are showing it here is basically like if you use rest apis to access or perform operations on the bucket that what are the differences you will have with the website endpoint this was a small bit on how you can host your own static website and i hope that was clear so let's move on then so this is a very important concept that we have here and uh, it's a very interesting one as well so please pay attention to this one so because we are going to discuss about one of the most important properties of s3 or important aspects of s3 there is a consistency model or the data consistency model before moving on to this let's understand what is consistency so what is consistency in general terms so consistency is the quality of always behaving or performing in a similar way or of always happening in a similar way so what happens if something is consistent and what does it mean to you remember one thing when you have consistency you have something that's consistent you can easily determine what its behavior will be at a particular given point of time so if you can determine what its behavior will be at a particular given point of time you can design your system accordingly so that 
in a way that suits the needs of your customers so let's suppose you have a object property uh, operation property that you know how it is going to behave at a given particular point of time then you can write a condition based on that when you have consistent behavior you always know what it is going to behave like okay that's how consistency comes into play so as we are talking about s3 we need to talk about the data consistency so let's talk about s3's data consistency model so when we talk about data what do we do with data we read and write data isn't it so aws s3 provides us the model to have read and write data consistency and it provides read after write consistency for puts of the new object in your s3 bucket in all region but there are a few conditions here the condition is if you make a head or get request to a key name before the object is created and then you create the object shortly after that and immediately or subsequently send a get request then the get request might not return the object due to eventual consistency and updates to the key are atomic so what it means is that if you make a put request to any existing key an immediate read to that particular key might return old data or updated data but it will never return corrupted or partial data that's the property of being atomic okay so what atomic property tells in s3 that whenever you make a put request and immediately send a get request for that then you might get the old data or you might get the updated data but you will never get a corrupt or partial data okay so the atomicity of the data that you have will always be preserved and amazon s3 does not currently support object locking so if two put requests are sent simultaneously made to the same key the request with the latest timestamp wins so if this is an issue you will need to build an object locking mechanism in your application so buckets also have a similar consistency model like if you delete a bucket and immediately send a get request for list all buckets then you might still see them in the list okay so there are two ways to determine consistency one is eventual consistency read and the other one is consistent read so the difference here is like eventual consistency here means at some point of time at some point in time it will be consistent it means you will get the proper data at some given point of time not now maybe not after five minutes not after 10 minutes but eventually you might get a proper data at any given point of time but consistent read will always give you the proper data when you request for it and as we have mentioned the differences here so as with uh, eventually consistent read you might have a higher possibility of getting stale reads and there will be a lowest read latency because when you're not waiting for operation to complete and you just want to return back whatever data that you get the latency will obviously will be less and there will be a higher read throughput and for consistent reads like no stale reads you will always get the latest data or the purest data that you have and potentially higher read latency because it has to wait for the operation to complete and then it has to fetch the data back and therefore it will obviously have a lower read throughput as well so what you have here is the client a and the client b and this is your request timeline okay so this is the write section and this is the read section for both of the clients so here the first operation that takes place is w1 where the key actually fruit is added the value for mango okay so mango is the first value that gets assigned to fruit and this is the same key okay fruit and next what happens the client b sends a request for fruit equal to orange okay that's the same key that the client b also is updating right now and here the next operation that happens is client a sends a read request okay and then client b sends a read request as the read operation of the first client has not completed yet and as you can see the w2 is already in progress so what will happen is so as you see here w1 and w2 are already complete when the timeline for read uh, one starts okay so now there are three possibilities here okay for a consistent read what will happen r1 and r2 will return fruit equal to orange why because both of the operation have been completed and this started first and this came second but eventually once this has been already completed when next request comes and it has overwritten the value then the latest value will be orange itself and when r1 actually sends a read request back so the for the consistent reads it will always be w2 because w2 came as a second operation after w1 let's suppose so what the eventual consistency read tells that r1 and r2 might return fruit equal to a mango or might return fruit equal to orange depending on the amount of time that has elapsed so it is based on the eventual consistency 
okay so now that we understand this so like uh, we have the right operation that has taken place first the second right operation from the client b has taken second and when the read consistency starts consistent reads you will get always w2 because w2 is the second operation that that took place uh, after w1 and r2 will also with consistency will have w2 and with eventual consistent reads we will have w1 or w2 or no result okay based on the time that has elapsed okay this is one model for consistency we'll see the next model so this is the next model here we have the client a and client b now the first operation w1 has started so fruit equal to mango so it has already written let's suppose okay then the next operation is w2 fruit equal to orange okay and here what happens is before the write has completed for w2 okay the read operation of client a has already begun so now this is a very complicated scenario right next operation that happens is r2 has begun the read so now in this case what happens is for a consistent read or eventually consistent read r1 might return fruit equal to mango or fruit equal to orange okay for a consistent read because it has already begun the read operation but the second w2 operation has not yet completed so we have a client a which has a right operation the w1 where fruit equal to mango has already been written and then we have a right operation from the client B where fruit equal to orange. And in the meantime, what has happened is there is the overlap of the timeline and where the read operation of client has already begun. Okay. So W2 has not yet finished. So we don't know whether it might return fruit or might return orange. So for a consistent read, it will be W1 or W2. So it can be either mango or it can be orange. Okay, but for R2, for consistency, it will always be W2 because the operation is way ahead of reading R2. And for eventual read, it will be either W1 or W2 or no result for both the cases. And it will depend on the time that has elapsed. Okay, so next example, again, we have client A and client B, read, write, read, write. So the first operation is like W1 fruit equal to mango. And what has happened here is, W2 has already started before the write has completed for W1. And let's see the read operation. Read operation is about to get started. But before that itself, it has overlapped W1 and W2. And here as well, the read operation has begun now. So in this case, what happens is when client B performs W2 before Amazon S3 returns a success for W1. So if you see this timeline here, it tells that this timeline actually tells you that the response has returned back to the caller or not. Okay. So the outcome of the final value is unknown. Okay. And the subsequent read, consistent read or eventual read might return either values. So we don't know which one we will get. So either it can be W1 or W2 for both the scenarios and either it can be like for eventual reads, it will be either W1, W2 or no result on both the cases. So here as well, if you see the data consistency model is also not that clear. So what exactly it wants to tell you that as there is no object locking in place for that same value or the same key that you have fruit here, there can be multiple operations that can be performed on the single key by numerous other users.